We got some good rackets. We got some good ones. You're excited. Mm -hmm. Look at you. You're usually not excited about talk about real estate. Really? <laughs> not not that excited, <laughs> you know. <laughs> This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 31 of The Real Word. All right, Nicole, you're, you're chomping at the bit. Tell them what you did. No, over this. Yeah. fine. We're no? done. No, you're not done. Nope. You're not done. We're all good. What did you do this weekend? I did nothing. You did nothing? Not a thing. Come on. Nothing. Come on. Nothing. You you wanted to thank Zillow for something. I did. You're a Zillow I, kiss I did. I went so and let it up. Oh, I am. I'm just trying to yeah. I'm just trying to catch up to you because you're just your face is so brown uh, from all that brown. I will nosing. bash Zillow, which I'm about to do, uh, in the t in the top. I did go and see um, topic. Go ahead. Inc incredible, incredible. Did you like the movie? I did. Give, it, give us what would you give it? You know, out of out of ten. I thought 9. it was point two. I, 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 okay, so the, I, I have to say that I think that you would actually enjoy the movie too. Oh. Um, it had wow. some had some it had some good like modern day like life humor? lessons you no know, the humor was there too but like okay. good la really interesting lessons um i enjoyed it and enjoyed you attribute it. zillow to why you went and saw the movie <laughs> not really but um you just wanted to get out of the house with your kids all right uh speaking of zillow mm -hmm. we're on it they put their first property as a seller mm -hmm. under contract right Do so we, have any, we have no details it's though. starting it's just on our contract i yeah, mean at any details. moment this, this thing could fall could fall apart. This is an it's under contracts, of course. You know the deal. Yeah, I know. Of course, it's fall apart. Man, Patrick, I feel like I feel like they're like it's. I feel I they're like it's jinxed. Oh my god! <laughs> Don't even talk about jinxing properties right now. My god. Mm. Uh, Patrick Kearns Inman article. Uh, he wrote the article. Put their first contract as a seller. Expected to close mid July. Mm -hmm. uh, George Lawton, the company's listing agent, confirmed this to Inman. A uh, Oh, for two twenty. They purchased it May thirty first. Oh, Zillow did. Zillow did for two hundred twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and it's going to be the first sale. What do they? What's it on for? Do we know how much it's on for? Um, no, this is a different one. There was one that they purchased for four hundred ten, and then they listed it for four twenty five, and they've already reduced the asking price to four eighteen. What? Why are they buying homes? I'm confused. So when when these properties get squeezed they don't tell us how much the one is going to sell for um that's under contract but as yeah, these but properties they could at least tell us what it's on the market for it, it, they don't they didn't ridiculous yeah that's ridiculous um but as these properties get squeezed a little bit like their like margin obviously on this four hundred twenty-five thousand dollar listing that went to 418 that they bought for 410 they're getting squeezed here on their margin. I mean, why? Are, I'm not understanding. Did and they and I'm assuming Zillow must have dropped some money into it too. Isn't that their 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 tactic here? Are they buying, fixing up, and then they're flipping? If they have to, right? They might just be cleaning it, paint, whatever. Uh, hmm. But it sounds like in the top of it, it doesn't get into it in the article. So Patrick, help us out here, brother. Throw me something. Um, it says it's there's another big. listing, and I'm assuming it's the four hundred thousand, four hundred twenty-five thousand dollar listing that got reduced by one point six percent on the commission so how do you feel about that on the commission mm -hmm. is that what it said oh no 1.6 percent on the list on the price, price. Right. i was like mm, 1.6 dude I but, all like, right so let's do this let's play this out Four well that's probably what that was the 418 to the 410 that was probably okay that's the 1.6 1. percent yeah. you're right mm -hmm. all right so that was a small reduction so i miss i misspoke we're, we're catching so, up so so where is the commission if they bought it for 410 and the list price is is 418 well, cause they're is Zillow now losing money because oh my God. I Zillow's and this totally is this is losing money. this is why I'm I'm because they're because they're hiring they're hiring an agent right okay a, 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 a agent but and this then they're is, this having is, to throw out a cobro this is why I'm a little confused I reached out to Zillow yeah personally and mm -hmm. I asked what the commission is going to be that they offer the premier agents on the list side yeah and it was and it was told to me that it was going to be appropriate rate for the local area okay. So if we look at our area, um, you could say a lot of times typically people are between Who five though? and six. So, so I'm curious. Then. So my point is if they bought it for 410 and it's now listed at 418, they're losing money just on the commission? Well, dude, listing it for 418, you're losing money on it regardless. Like why would you put it back in the market for eight Gs more? 
It doesn't even make any sense. But anyway, I, 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 there's lots of questions, though, too, because, um, you know, maybe these agents are willing to take a little bit of a reduced rate because maybe Zillow, I mean, Zillow is obviously a huge company. Maybe they're the ones that are doing the marketing. Maybe they're spending their marketing dollars. Most of the homes are priced at less than 10000 for what they were purchased. After factoring in agent commission and the slight cosmetic re re uh, renovations. So they're wanting to? They're wanting the home, to lose money? The profit is slim. So uh, an investor call last month, CEO Spencer Raskoff mm -hmm. addressed that small profit margin. And he said, even if Zillow were to say make $3,500 on average of each home with a large number of transactions, it would turn a big profit. And then he gets into theory, you know, 5% of sellers selected this method. But then I don't even think they're going to capitalize on 5% of the, the marketplace, by the way. I think like, that's a little aggressive. But then, like, they have to pay, like, tax on the money that they're making. Conveyance I mean, tax. It, it, you're just talking about, like, you're talking about, well, like, no, a no, couple hundred no, I, I doubt they're paying uh, taxes because they'll probably just keep rolling this over. I don't know what they're, but there's, I'm like not their profit. CPA. You have to pay tax on a profit. It's not like just because, like, they're oh, a yeah. company. Yeah. Not if you roll it over. Not if you roll it over and, and you just keep deferring the I taxes. I don't know. The whole thing doesn't make any because sense they, to me. Because they're they're grouping this. I'm I'm not a CPA. Now we're getting way out of unless our, they our, unless, our world unless here. they're purposely taking them and purposely taking a loss to like offset something here's, else. Here's here's my question, and, and this is what Ooh. I'm looking. If anyone can help us out, Please. whether you're from Labcoat, uh, you're from Inman, maybe it's Patrick. What is the commission? Because if they're listing these homes for ten thousand dollars on average more then they bought them for but yet they're giving uh an appropriate commission to the local area something's off something's they're not starting adding off up. as a negative already absolutely something's not adding up with the numbers that i'm running and i'm not yeah. the smartest guy and i got a c minus in math class well, but it's not an F. based off of my iphone calculator you're losing money on every one of and these deals when you pay costs. a commission. I mean, taxes, right. especially if you're in a situ in, in, in an area where there's a lot yeah. of like FHA buyers, like you have to hold on to the property for at least 90 days. So I did not brown nose Zillow. No? No. no. I'm asking for clarification. We need clarification. No, no, in the past. 100%. In the past, yeah. I, I'd, love, I'd like some clarification too on what Open Door is doing with all their money. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah. inboxing, you know, so the last video I had some some inboxing going on on she Twitter. She wanted us to really do it. I Somebody was down. from Open Door and, and she said, hey, you guys should come visit a local area. Open Door, you got the dough. You just got 300 plus milli. Send us out yes. to Vegas and or we'll somewhere. We'll take our marketing guy with us. We'll do a whole video. We're going to take Sam. Totally got to take Sam with us. Everybody Document should. Document all of it. Everybody jack up uh, Open Door on Twitter. Let them know that you want the real word to go do a vlog style weekend uh, weekend warrior showings so fun. on some open door properties. I don't think that I'd call it weekend warrior. Give me a few days and I'll come up with a real name. All right, we're not gonna do we that. We know that you hate names. Racket number one, these rackets are sick. All right, racket number one, extorting the Jills in Miami, Florida. Love it. Is this a racket or not? I don't know. I, the whole thing is mind blowing to me because in the article, the Jills are pretty much admitting the fact. Okay, so what's going on here? The Jills are obviously listing agents through Coldwell Banker down they're in the They're big Miami. agents. They're huge agents. They're killing it down in down the Miami Beach area. And what they're doing is that when their listings expire, they're changing. I don't know if it's the zip code or the address or what, but they're changing the location of the homes the location, when they yeah. expire. So that other agents within that area don't call the list the, the the sellers. Do you think the Jills would hate me in their marketplace? <laughs> How much do you think they'd hate what we're doing? I, I, like we're calling on expireds. We're, we're calling totally on canceled calling on listings expires. all the, thing, the time. Now we know that we have to actually call a, a bigger area to get right. our area. Um, so a, a, so an, another Miami Beach a, realtor Kevin, found out about Kevin this. Tomlinson found guilty of extorting the Jills, his rivals in Miami Beach's luxury Where real estate market. he took the wrong turn is that instead of just like going to maybe the MLS or going to Coldwell Bank or whatever it was that he needed to do, he he tried to extort them out of how much? $800,000. He started at two fifty a each. piece. Yeah. Then he went up to four hundred. They recorded this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they went to the authorities and he's like, yeah, but they're doing this on the MLS. And the authorities are like, dude, we don't care about the MLS. Yeah. That's how much it shows you guys. You know, you get into something that's really legal. The MLS and all these like code of ethics and all this bullshit that that NAR 
really wants to stand behind doesn't matter when when something really when real life yeah when, like real shit happens. so it's a shame because he was on to something yeah. except he did it the but then he, he did it completely the wrong so way. So the whole thing is a racket. He's a racket. They're a racket. The Jills the are whole. a big time racket here, and, and because they're they're literally they had this guy. They're in claiming their office. they're claiming that their sellers didn't want to get expired calls, but it no, no, gives no, no, you but, a but number. Here, it's like four hundred times it's happened. Yeah, yeah. Did they give you a number? Yeah, but but here's the the goods. Both testified that they asked an office associate. They're passing the buck. They are. For help because their clients with unsold homes were incest, inc incensed, not incest, <laughs> incensed <laughs> by barrages of phone calls from rival brokers looking to get in on the listings. So this guy, Juan Carlos uh, Atoya, who's in the Jill's office, changed data on at least 51 oh, it was properties. 51. I thought it was more than that. On at least 51 properties. And the, the Jill's are sitting back saying, ah, but we didn't know about this. Like we didn't know it was it was on all these properties. They one hundred percent Jill's listen, I'll still take your referrals. But you one hundred percent you one hundred percent knew what was going on. Crazy. Nobody that's running a team or an office doesn't know what's going on inside of that. And it's a total racket that you're just not going to rest on the relationships that you've built, uh, the the product that you're putting out there. You know, all the stuff that you've done for the listing. Like if you're good enough to keep the listing, then you should keep it. But this is a competitive marketplace. And if I was in Miami, I'd be dialing every one of your expireds nonstop just because I know you're going to react this way to it. Right. right? And, and so the other Crazy. dude, he's, he's a total racket. He's going to go to jail. Look at him, though. Look, um, at the, look at that picture of him. He's you super can't, smug. You can't be extorting people, dude. That's, no. that's a complete racket. And if that much money, I mean, when you're in Miami, I, I'd like to think that you're like – I feel yeah. like maybe you should have asked for more. That's a My Miami Herald. As we always do, we'll link up uh, the article. There's not an article for racket number two, but this could be, my friends, the best all-time racket we've ever done. Yeah, ever. Woo. Small town private Facebook pages. Are they a racket, Nicole? Oh yes or no? They are a total racket. Um, Why? I Why have, are they Well, the problem is, though, I totally fall into like, what that is a, rabbit hole. What is a small town private Facebook page? Because if you're living in the city, you're probably like, what is this? What, what oh, are my God. I'm about? sure cities have it, though, too. Yeah, like, like, they're like neighborhoods. In our yeah. So it's uh, they have to. Yeah. They have to. So they're just town. They're town community pages. So in, in the where, town that, that you and I live in. Yes, there is a one page. That's called it's it, Guilford, Connecticut. Yes. And it's called Simply Guilford. Simply Guilford. The town that we're sitting in right now. We're in our Niantic office. There is, uh, I think it's called Niantic Beach Bums is a private Facebook group. I'm sure group. in every town and has yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And people... Um People talk about everything. They talk everything. about the weather. Everything. Hey, they need a recommendation for like an electrician. I saw a coyote. Look at this, look at this really cool. Yeah, there was a bear. Yep. Um, pulling underwear from a campsite and pulling it across the road. Like yeah. just all kinds That's of weird. You, they just talk about weird stuff. Yes. All kinds of weird stuff. They make, they harass local developers in town. They do all sorts of <laughs> lovely things. Right. So what I've found that the, the, the posts that have the least amount of engagement are the most true. <laughs> and, and the ones that have high levels of engagement are complete rackets. They're usually ridiculous. Yeah. I'll give an example of, of Niantic. There's a, a restaurant really close to where we're sitting right now. And they shut down for a week or two weeks or whatever. Well, it was like they, a week. They closed multiple locations. They had two or three different restaurants. They closed them all at the same time. And they were doing some renovations across the board. People started to comment on this thread. Oh, my gosh. They're, they're human trafficking. Like all this weird stuff's happening. And it just started spiraling out of control. Hundreds of comments and feedback of people saying... <laughs> Well, of debating no this is what's happening other people saying no it, the it's the funniest renovations. part though is that some of those people that even comment on there probably don't even live in the town anymore oh, they're no. from of the course. town but just like continue to follow what's going on in the town so then they start chiming in and so the restaurant owners it's start posting like, pictures like no we're painting here's the, the wet paint <laughs> Which and is almost worse because it's just like just reopen your doors and show them that you're not really like yeah human and it, trafficking. It highlights the fact that that people can throw stuff against the wall and it and it <gasps> and it really catches. Oh my legs. gosh! Okay, so this is actually perfect. I mean, it's sort of not the same thing, but kind of. So um, just the other day, um, I, I'm sure everyone has heard there's a restaurant in um, Virginia that turned away the secret or the. Um, who is that woman? Help hmm. me here. The pre the president. The oh the gosh. The president? Donald? No. no Donnie no, no. T? 
the we, president's wife? Can we edit this just because it's no, no oh editing, God. Sam. There's absolutely it, no. It all the president's it, wife, it all, the no, daughter, no, 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 the, the 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 press secretary. The press sec. Oh, uh, yes. Sarah. Uh, yes. What's her Whatever name? Whatever her name is. What's her name? Press secretary. See? Mm. see? Just just flash it when, yeah, once just, you figure it yes, out. Press secretary. I, I know what so she looks like. So there's a restaurant in Virginia that turned her away, and the restaurant in Virginia was called the Red Hen. So there is a red hen in the town of Old Saybrook, Connecticut. And if you go to their Facebook page. They're saying this restaurant now turned people away in Old Saybrook. Holy crap. These poor people. I've seen at least 600 comments oh on their God. Facebook page. Like to the point now, there was an article in the paper that I read that the woman of the red hen in Old Saybrook is now considering like changing her name because of this. The, the, the reviews on their Facebook page have gone through the roof. Wow. And they're not negatively even ne negative. And they're not even affiliated. And even when they put a post on their Facebook page, disclosing the fact people that people argue that they are affiliated. They, yeah. Cause they're thinking it, it's like a chain. That's my biggest problem. You can show evidence on these pages. Oh no, we're painting yeah. or, Oh no, that's not the case. Um, and people will make whatever. And people are going to argue back with with zero evidence. Zero. It's not a it's not a conversation. Sarah S Sand Sanders. Sanders. Yes, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sarah. Thanks, Sam. Um, but 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 people are going to argue with no evidence. There's not a conversation happening. So a few years ago, I was like, man, these things are going to be how you become the voice of your community. I I I was like 100. These. Uh, local Facebook pages are how you're going to really be seen as that local real estate expert chiming in. I think chiming in consistently on them can make you look like a complete fool. The people wasting their time on, on these platforms. I chime in every once in a while. Are, are typically here. The people that, and I get it, chiming in once in a while yeah. and, and then being uh, engaging is not a bad thing. But the people that are divisive on these things are the people that are 100% not looking to sell their home. They're going to be there for the rest of their lives. Well, they lives. better be there for the rest of their lives because the problem is, is that they're they're criticizing other people in the town that they're uh, that they're accusing that they love and and and, yeah. and, and, the, and cherish and I love living here and I don't want it to change. It's and those types of people. Don't change. Don't change. It's don't just, change. It's super counterproductive. And you just yeah. If we if these changes weren't happening, your house would be worth probably what you paid for it back in 1975, yeah. which was like. Three dollars, and I think that if you're a buyer coming into one of these towns, oh, yeah. I'd stay away from those places be because you're not going to get a true no representation uh, no, of what what no. the community is. I like would still at do all. what I always say, which is which is if you're a buyer going into any town, spend a month doing breakfast and lunch somewhere in that town. Don't eat in, eat out every single day for a month in that town. People are always doing drive-bys of the houses, but they don't understand the town. Right. Like get right. into the restaurants, yeah. the coffee shops, the but marketplaces. But not those Facebook pages. Those are mind blowing. Stay away from those. Those are a racket. Racket number three, spying sellers. This What's is your a fun one on too, because this article in the middle of us reading this is another it, local we didn't stuff. even realize that this is a Realtor Mag article. Um, Betsy Anderson, she's a local real estate she, agent. I know her. I love Betsy. She's in Madison, Connecticut, William Pitt Sotheby's International Realty. Uh, she was going through a tour. It was of her listing. It was of her listing, and it, it sounded like it was maybe her buyers too. I don't know if it was. Either what, way, she was she there. She was giving a tour. She opened up the back door for something, and, and I think she left it open, and all of a sudden she got a message from her seller saying, why are you Text. letting wh Yeah, why are you letting the cold air into the house? And she was instantly. <sighs> so, But in, it's interesting, though, because in, in, in Connecticut, you are required by law to disclose on a list uh, on when you're taking listing paperwork if you are going to be recording. Yeah, it's written into the Connecticut MLS. So I'm MLS. actually a little flabbergasted that that even took place place because there was there could have been some crazy ramifications for the fact that that seller didn't disclose the fact that he was recording but what this article is saying is that it actually will hurt you as a seller if this is what you're doing i agree i mean i have to kind of agree it's sort of like we always you argue think it hurts sellers well it, it's I, I, so, it's sort of like what we were talking about. What we always talk about is like, should a should the listing agent be at showings? You know, right? Mm -hmm. Is it hurting or is it hurting or helping? I think the majority of the time it hurts. Exactly. So I think this you're essentially doing the same exact thing by recording because yeah. people are just they're not feeling comfortable in the house. They're already yeah. feeling like you're going to be super protective and really hard to work with. Here, it's mm -hmm. I just I think that I, I think a hundred percent of listings in five plus years are going to be recorded. So I think it's I think right now we're not used to it. 
Well, I think I think the fact that it wasn't disclosed. I think I think it one hundred percent needs to be disclosed. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you there. And if and if this seller didn't disclose that, which which Betsy was caught off guard, so obviously they didn't. Yeah, because it says later the, she updated the disclosure, but she, yeah, I mean they should have disclosed that. That's from total the very crap. Beginning. That yeah, that that's, part's a racket. Because they signed in that contract. It's in there. Yeah, it's, there's a a, a paragraph. Yeah, it, it's very clear. Yes. Now that part's a racket. But what I don't think is a racket is the fact that. Again, and I beat up on it all the time, open doors, sell all these things where you're going to be able to go to listings without an agent, which is going to become the norm, whether you're a broker or an open door um, company or something similar to that. You're going to let people into homes eventually without agents because it just makes the most sense. And those are going to be recorded. I was going to say, I wonder if open door is recording them. That I don't know. That I'd love to find out. Maybe we'll jack up. To. Um, I mean, you have to have. There has to be some. Especially if they're just letting people too. in. They're just. There has to be some sort of. In that situation, they have to. Right. I mean, God yeah. forbid there's like destruction. Exactly. Or, I, I, mean, I think it makes a lot of sense when you have an empty house, and you don't have agent representation to make sure that everyone knows. I mean, it's this. You know, uh, I just went on a listing appointment, and the seller has the sign on the window that says "recording device." He had somebody come up to the window at, at night, the garage window, saw the sign, ran away. It can be used as a deterrent. Well, I mean, I think I have an ADT sign out the exactly. front of my house. But but my point is, like, if you're going to go view a property and now you know you're being 100% recorded, they have your information on the sign-in, that's why I believe this, this whole thing about, oh, my gosh, you're going to let people in without an agent. Like, dude, half the agents out there are scumbags. Like you're worried about normal people coming in when you have all their contact information. Maybe you have a credit card right. and you haven't recorded. Well, so it's I gonna think it's going to work. Uh, it's well, going to work. The thing is, though, is that as an agent, we should be following all of those protocols. Even if you're taking off a buyer, like managers all the time say get a picture of their of their light driver's license. And agents are always like super timid about asking for their driver's license to make a copy of it. But it's all just, it's all really good practices. Yeah. But obviously Open Door is probably going to require these things for people to go into these homes, which yeah. also just, I think it'll also, um, Dude, it'll, like, it'll weed out all of the people that are just looking, like I, you and I, that are looking to go on like I'm telling a San you right, Antonio tour. I'm telling you right now. We I need had to, to do that this, Macy. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Tim. <laughs> uh, Tim, you better be watching. Drop us a comment at this moment. Um, 100% this winter, we should be focused on building out a website that, you know, like when you uh, order some food online mm -hmm. and you can scan your credit card. Yes. Like schedule a showing to this property now. S to your point, scan your license, mm -hmm. upload it right to mm -hmm. our system, and you just mm -hmm. go right through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then you gain access to the, to the house because I had calls this weekend. People last minute wanting to see houses. Uh, you know, they had a two hour window. Like, I'm not yeah. even in the town. I get that all the time. All the time, right? Yeah. And like they're coming up from New York. It's like you had a th even had like a three hour drive to plan for this. And no, now they don't. You're here? But listen, people don't care and no. they're never going to start caring. You're not going to educate human beings to start caring about your time. Right. They don't give a f right. nor, nor should they. Right. So when they have the well, opportunity. Well, it's not even see, my time. I'm not even worried about my time. It's, it's just a, a matter of Everyone's, getting into right. that house. But if you're committed, if you're a serious seller, what are your hours? And then people can sign up and go see the house. I think it makes a lot of sense. Betsy, poor little Betsy. Uh, I'm sorry this happened. Your I sellers. I too, but I, and it's so funny. Like I never ball. even, we'll have to reach out to her. And, and I don't think to, to the overall point of how this started, and we're going to link this one up. It's a Realtor Mag special from Nicole White. Uh, I think the overall point here is that if you're a seller and you're just looking to see if your agent's doing the right job, and Betsy's a great agent. So I love Betsy. It's not, and we just know that she's local, but... Um, then then you sh probably don't have the right agent. Yeah. If you're that concerned, you probably don't have the I right agree. agent. And if you're going to be that hands-on, maybe you should maybe look at... Maybe should do a FISBO. Maybe you should look at the FISBO, Bozo. All Gotta. right. Those are the rackets. That's good. Drop us some feedback and definitely go on to Twitter and let Open Door know to take the crew, us. Byron, Nicole, and Sam, at an Open Door City We'll do a serious we'll vlog style. We'll do all style. the video. I mean, we'll we'll it'll pretty be like much a, we'll market Open Door. We'll it'll be, be like a marketing. movie, right, Sam? It'll be a <laughs> it'll be a goddamn movie. We'll blow it. We'll blow the uh, what is it? What did I go see? Incredible. Two. Thank you. We'll blow them right out of the water. It, it'll be so incredible. We'll start real word productions. <laughs> wow. See you guys next week. Bye.